Hi everyone, I'm Steve, here again with Dr. Nario for our weekly interview. Thanks for being with us, Doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for having me again, and belated Merry Christmas to everyone. Yes, and a Happy New Year. And so, Happy New Year. Um, I know you got back from Las Vegas, um, something that I know that you have a lot of fun with. Uh, you go down there every year, or maybe twice mm -hmm. a year. And you learn all this new information about new stuff and new studies and all that stuff. So today we're going to talk about um, a fatty acid. It's called, I'm going to call it C15, but it's a new <laughs> supplement. What is it? Tell us about it. Well, Steve, so I was pertaining to, yes, the anti-aging conference that happens every year in Las Vegas. And that's where they reveal the newer findings, newer devices that actually is related to health, longevity, and wellness. And there's one that caught my attention that's called C15. And the longer term for that is called pentadecanoic acid. So just stick with C15 so you can remember it better. It's the first essential fatty acid to be discovered again uh, in 90 years. 90 years because I was, I'm pertaining to the one that was discovered before that is omega-3. Right. So see how much of a distance that is in terms of timeline. And uh, just to remind our audience, a fatty acid is cannot uh, an essential fatty acid. What I mean is cannot be synthesized by the body or created. That's why we, we need it to be sourced from somewhere else. And we don't create much of it on our own. And therefore, uh, it's very essential for our functioning. A good example here for, for that would be like in humans, alpha linoleic acid and linoleic acid are essential fatty acids. So we need to get that. Sometimes you hear that in supplements. And C15, um, there's a lot of different types of, um, of fatty acid chains out there. So when you have an even number for fatty acid uh, chains, it's pro-inflammatory. So that's why saturated fats, it's, a, it's an even number. If you get an odd number, that's when you know it's stable. And now you get majority of the health benefits from that if you get a, an odd number chain. And of course, PUFAs or um, polyunsaturated fatty acid is an example of an unstable uh, unsaturated fat, which is pro-inflammatory, oxidative, and it's, it's, yeah, it's very harmful for the system. Okay, so I just want to repeat what I think I heard, mm -hmm. which is amazing. So this is a fatty acid, an essential of fat, fatty acid, which means you have to get it in your body. You have to put it in your body. Mm -hmm. So this is an essential fatty acid that was just discovered. I mean, it was there, but we didn't know. Science yeah. didn't know it was there. So this is a newly found fatty acid? Uh, yeah, since 90 years. Uh, and omega was actually the last one. Omega threes was the, was the last one found since then. Wow. Okay. So I, I got two more big questions for you <laughs> knowing that. Sure. Okay. Where do you get it? Because obviously it, it's an essential fatty acid. So people have been getting it in their body or they'd be dead. Mm -hmm. So right. where, where have we been getting this C15 fatty acid? Right. So Steve, uh, as I speak about it, of course, yeah. Uh, it's in a supplement, but your question is, how come we're getting it? Where do we get it? It's still making our bodies function. It's actually in, in a part, it's part of a cow's diet. So that's why when we humans take this in, um, as we take in meat or, but specifically more on milk, uh, actually uh, eight ounces of milk is what can like, um, what the, the theory of how we get the good amount or required amount that our body needs. That's why we're getting our C15s and making our bodies function naturally. But you have to remember, this is also declining for the reason that, uh, especially now with, with the trend of veganism or vegetarianism, and also as we process milk, uh, that also declines. The quality of cows that are out there, they're not the same anymore. And it's it's actually, uh, it's a, that's why it's a fatty acid, as you can see. And of course, I mentioned about the food source. It can also be uh, uh, retrieved from, uh, from a supplement. And the supplement is, again, 
is backed up by so much science. And that's where they found really the, the full benefits of C15. Okay, so this is a supplement that is called C15. So mm -hmm. what if you're vegan or vegetarian? Can you still get it? Because mm -hmm. let's say I'm a vegetarian and I don't want to eat any dairy products. Right. Or I don't want to take a supplement that comes from a dairy product mm -hmm. for whatever I say I have. It's I'm not a vegan, but let's just say I am. Uh -huh. And um, I have my reasons. How would I get it? Is there a way? Yeah, so that's uh, that's a good question, and I asked that also there. So they did say that they have a vegan-friendly source. So for some reason, I <laughs> I think they gave me the explanation, and I got lost in translation just because of how the whole process goes. But just to answer you directly for our viewers, also yes, there is a vegan-friendly uh, version of it. And that would be the way to get it from supplement because you said we're not getting enough from food anyway, right? And yeah. the degradation of the animals and the processing and all that is going to uh, lower the quality of, you know, where we normally would get it, right? Right. That is correct. Okay. So what are the benefits of this newly found fatty acid? C15. What are the benefits? Well, there's so many. So uh, the, the generalized ones usually uh, has been seen on the, the studies that was presented. The, the well, glucose regulation, um, sugar regulation, mitochondrial support, uh, autophagy, meaning killing the zombie cells or the senescent cells in our system, uh, cellular energy leading to longevity. Uh, it's actually, yeah, the, 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 the healthy... Uh, it produces a uh, healthy hemoglobin. So thus, again, when you have, of course, old hemoglobin in the body, aging is increased because it's, it's the carrying capacity of oxygen is low. But the highlights uh, more of what I, I hear uh, is actually the anti-inflammatory anti effects uh, from the antioxidative capacities of the supplement it also is antifibrotic, breaks up scar tissue in our organs to make them function better. And it's also found to be anti-cancer. It stops the proliferation of six cancer cell types in early studies. And uh, yeah, and even reverses the resistance to some of the drugs being used. And also founding out that antimicrobial, meaning these are the, the like an antibiotic. I'm not saying it's an antibiotic, but it has those benefits as well. Wow. So do you think that since this is a, a new thing, you think they're going to come up with new types of or new ways to supplement this? Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's just an oral capsule or something. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, they're going into the field of liquid. And but the, the here, uh, something to add to, to that question. And I, I, this is a question that really came from us uh, as clinicians. So this is how do we monitor the effectivity of, of the supplement, right? So we request for specific blood tests. So one of the, the, the highlights that we, we hear about, or they as they highlighted it, you look at cholesterol, triglycerides, uh, insulin, uh, even fasting glucose, you like this, the fasting glucose test, uh, and then also liver enzymes and blood pressure. You mentioned that also a while ago while we were talking. It even has evidence lowering BMI, body weight, waist tip circumference, even the CRP inflammation markers. Um, and uh, that, those are the tests that actually showed uh, improvements while on the, on the supplement. And in general, and with the disease uh, uh, that controls diabetes 2, cardiovascular, even people who had histories of myocardial infarction and heart disease in general and fatty liver, and cancers. So there's so many things about this supplement that is so bright for its future. So something that really that us clinicians and you, the viewers, should look forward to. Wow. So all you're doing is you're when when you supplement with this, you're seeing an, an improvement in all those things you just mentioned, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But is there a direct way to measure this fatty acid in your body yet? Yeah, so like a, an actual C15 level, right? So that one they have not mentioned. They 
they, they, they use these tests indirectly uh, in relation to how does the effects manifest. So could that be something in the horizon for them? Uh, that's probably for them to answer. Uh, but it's just interesting on how, because the studies is only uh, putting this on the subjects and they're not on anything else. So that's how they monitor the improvement of these, uh, of the effectivity of this uh, supplement. Wow, very interesting and very fascinating. Uh, Dr. Nario, thanks for being with us and thanks for bringing us this new information. Well, thank you, Steve, for having me again. As we all know, knowledge is power. And thank you for letting me provide you with the edge and longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.